Recently, I've been thinking a lot about the quote, you're born alone and you die alone. Around six months ago, I went through the worst pressure breakup of my life. I literally went through five stages of grief on a daily basis. At the onset of this whole ordeal, I was plagued by this deep sinking feeling of dread that I could no longer talk to these two people anymore, and there was an awakening hour where I wasn't mulling over this. There would be moments where I would want to pick up the phone to call my then best friend but couldn't because we were no longer friends and I would feel so lost. And there would be other moments where I would see TikTok and proceed to instinctively hit the send button, willing to remember that we weren't on speaking terms. However, time really does heal a lot and recently I found myself thinking of them less, so I want to get my thoughts out there before they completely fade away. I've always been a super shy kid in school, maybe because I was traumatized on the first day of kindergarten and could barely speak English at the time, but that habit of self-imposed silence eventually became my safety net. My mentality was, if I didn't talk, I couldn't be judged, and while this prevented anyone from strongly disliking me, it was also a detriment to the formation of any positive relationships, aka friendships. For our elementary school, I kind of just hung out with whatever girls I was put in class with every year, and I never felt any strong attachment to anyone. It wasn't until 7th grade that I experienced the first series of friendship betrayals that led me to develop attachment issues. Long story short, I was in a friend group in 6th grade that carried over to the start of 7th grade and I was actually the newest member of this group as they had known each other since elementary school. However, I felt comfortable and accepted enough around them to introduce one of my elementary school friends into this group. Then a new girl moved into our school around the 7th second month of seventh grade and this friend group replaced me with her they switched from our usual lunch table to different ones sat away from me in class and stopped talking to me at first my elementary school friend who i had introduced to me stuck by me but within one month she sided with the rest of the group in hindsight i can understand why a middle school girl would succumb to her mentality but at the same time this really stung and i would be lying if i said i don't hold bitterness towards her Around this time, I also had a falling out with the girls I knew from my parents' church. I was never the most obedient kid, so I was already being judged by adults in this church, but I brushed it off since I felt like I still have my friends beside me. Then, around the same time period, a girl was saying harsh words to me and my only defense mechanism at the time was to also say the most hurtful thing possible to her. At the end of this, I didn't even want to associate myself with the people at church anymore and it felt like I had simultaneously lost both communities in my life and my whole world was essentially falling apart. I was kind of in a social limbo for around a year before I made new friends in 8th grade that lasted pretty much throughout high school. However, during this year, I was sitting alone at lunch every day and had no one to turn to besides my dog at home. Thus, I developed thick skin and ra rationalized that I would much rather enjoy a life of solitude than become entangled in a toxic web of falsehoods, aka fake friendships. I still carry the habit of taking a long time to become attached to someone, but once I do become attached to someone, that feeling becomes very intense. Which is why I heard tenfold when my two closest friends told me that they didn't want to put in the same level of effort into our friendship as I was willing to. I transferred colleges last semester and was having a terrible transition, which led me to call my best friend multiple times a week, sometimes multiple times a day, and talk for literally 3-4 to four hours. This was mutual though, because she would call me just as much as I was calling her. We both weren't dating anyone, so in a way, the emotional support that you would seek from a partner was what we were getting from each other. Mind you, we were both claiming each other as besties, like if we were calling and someone on her end interrupted, she would be like, oh, I'm calling my best friend. So the feeling was mutual. Thus, I naturally expected us to want to meet up and hang out as much as possible once we were on summer vacation. There was another girl in a group chat who we were also close friends with since high school, but there was no communication between my best friend and her. Thus, I decided, as I always did, to be the one to arrange our hangouts. However, each time I would make plans, it would have to be a week beforehand, and once I went to confirm those plans with them a week later, they would hit me with, oh, I'm busy, or oh, I have to take care of my siblings. At this time, my dad was also questioning me every day, being like, when are you going to hang out with those two friends? I thought you guys were close. This went on for weeks and it felt like a 360 degree ambush on my sanity. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore and sent them a long ass paragraph telling them that I felt undervalued in our friendship and the reasons why I felt this way. I immediately did say things very straightforwardly, but I thought that them being my friends for five years by that point would understand that I would only talk that way with people that I care about when I'm trying to get a point across as clearly as possible. 
and thought part of the real friendship is calling out the other when they're falling short. Moreover, my best friend was also complaining to me around this time that another one of her friends wasn't putting an effort into their friendship, so I thought that she would be extra receptive to what I had to say. Their response was a complete slap in the face. They pretty much told me that they didn't have the time or desire to put energy into that friendship and would rather focus their focus on their quote unquote career and just because they were not always initiating plans or communication does not mean that they don't care and in the future we will go years without seeing each other. This was completely illogical to me because what do you mean we won't be seeing each other for years in the future? One of you guys will literally be in the same city as me after college and actions speak much louder than words so not consistently putting oil on the gear will make it rust and one day become rubbish, trash. So you guys not even wanting to spend spare one hour of your summer vacation to grab coffee and catch up does not in any way scream I value our friendship to me. While the loss of those specific friendships was indeed sad, if certain people are not a fit for you in the current era of your life, then those relationships are simply a misfit and you shouldn't try to force a shoe that wouldn't fit. This reality can be hard to accept and I was honestly somewhat depressed for almost the entire fall semester. This happened in June because I didn't want to face reality. However, I also realized that there was a deeper meaning and attachment to longer standing friendships. Much like the saying, hair holds memories, friendships hold memories. These two friendships I lost were formed during a time when we were teenagers and had no real adult responsibilities to worry about. These two friendships held memories of more carefree times where I lived in a bubble that consisted of what felt like an eternity of lighthearted gossip and petty drama, where I got to see my friends every day and life was a safe, monotonous routine, where the future seemed far removed enough to comfortably fantasize about and where I didn't yet have to face the impending doom of adulthood. So I suppose what stunned the most about losing these friendships was that it felt like I was losing my grounding, almost like I was blindfolded and forced onto the train rapidly moving towards an unknown destination without time to process what's going on. Thus, to me, accepting the breakup of these friendships, or at the very least, its evolution into more distant friendships, meant enduring the growing pains of accepting a harsher and more difficult reality, and that just makes me want to throw up. But how do we actually move past the breakup? Yeah, we can analyze our feelings all we want, but then what? For me, after I've had a few days to cool down, I reevaluated my friendships as objectively as possible. First, I looked to see if the issues we were facing were able to be resolved, if I would be able to forgive them essentially for telling me to F off, and if our current personalities were even compatible. And I felt this way about my best friend. It took me a whole summer to get into the right mental headspace to do this, but after the new, new school semester started, I sent her a text saying, hey, I think we should talk. When do you have time if you're down? She replied the day of and said that she was busy at the time but will let me know when she, she'll be available. Well, it's been over three months now and she still hasn't let me know, so I can only assume that it's over. But she recently started viewing all my stories, so I'm not sure what that means because she's been strategically avoiding watching them since the summer. And I know that she's been on Insta because I see her liking influencers or celebrities posts. But what I'm trying to say is that if you think the friendship is worth fighting for and you can somewhat swallow your pride and try to make up with them, even if you don't see any facets of what you may have done wrong, it's worth giving it a try. However, if you feel that they are still continuously disrespecting you, then you shouldn't degrade yourself and continue to beg for their attention. Anyways, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. This is my first time making a video essay kind of video, so I hope it was somewhat coherent and not all over the place. And I don't know how relatable or helpful even this will be to other people because it was just me ranting about my own issues. But yeah, I just, I had a script and I, but it was just me writing down my thoughts as it came. So yeah, I don't know. But update, the best friend and I have actually been texting and we're trying to work things out. And honestly, I don't know how it'll go and I don't know like what I even expect of her now. Even though she has understood my point of view and how I- it was like- okay, so she has like a bunch of siblings and I'm only child and it was like she- I felt like we didn't view friendship on the same plane like for her. In, in the text I wrote to her, I said it's like a luxury for you but a necessity for me. But I could see how for this scenario it could be a happy ending like potentially but yeah but for all the other friendship breakups I had like a lot of them actually none of them not all of them had like a dramatic ending some of them just faded away and it's like really natural and it's actually rare to actually be able to work things out when it does blow up i feel like but i definitely want to make another video about 
just like adult friendships and like, especially like in college because I feel like I have thoughts on that and yeah I didn't put it in this video because it would have been too long but yeah I have like a bunch of topics in my notes app that I want to make videos about but I just never had time to and yeah but I'll definitely make it so look out for that in like one to six months and yeah i'll see you guys next time